Hi everyone, I'm James, and today I want to talk about the jump step component. So it is this one right here, and you can tell it's jump because it's these two dots that look like two different uh, steps on the sequencer with a line between it that shows that you go from one to the other. So I think that's one of the more clear ones. And this is one of the most powerful ones on the entire OPZ, so I want to just talk about one through four today. I'm going to be using it a lot in combination with component spark. So if you're not familiar with that, I suggest you uh, go look it up. And uh, I want to talk about how we're going to combine that with jump to create repeated sections and also to create overall song structure that applies to just this track. So not the overall pattern, but um, kind of having different patterns within or having a pattern within just one track. So I'm going to add the same chords that I did last video to start off with. We're on the chords track again. On step one, I'm going to add C sharp minor. So that's C sharp, E, G sharp. Step five, I'm going to add D major. So that's D, F sharp, and A. On step nine, I'm going to add A major first inversion. So that's C sharp, E, and A. And then on step 13, I'm going to add E major second inversion. So that's B, E, G sharp. If we play it just like this, going to sound bad because it's uh, each one of these steps currently is just set to being 1 16th uh, the length of 1 16th note so we'll change that by holding down track and holding down shift and instead of 1 16th note we're just going to go ahead and do the quarter note and now we've got this so that way it is uh, where it was for the one, two, three, four, video on multiply one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. just a very simple one, four bar two. loop the way that we're going to repeat this is by adding uh, step comp or component sparks and jump components. I'm going to start by adding all of the component sparks. So I'm going to put one on step four, one on step eight, one on step 12, and then one on step 16. So I pressed all of those. So now anything, I, any step component I press is going to apply to all four of those. I'm going to press component spark, and I'm actually going to press two again so that it happens only the first of every two times. Uh, I just want to show you how to stay on the Spark component, uh, step component page. Usually I'll just release shift, but let me just unselect these notes. I guess I'm reselecting that one, so I could have just kept it selected. But I'm going to now add my jump. And for this one, I'm going to have it jump to one. Let go of it. This one, I'll have jump two. Let go of shift. This one, jump three. And then finally, this one, jump four. So what the sequencer will do is once it hits this step, the first of every two times, it's going to go back to one. When it hits this step, the first of every two times, it's going to go back to two. Because jump values one through four will bring you to step one, five, nine, or 13. So basically, um, if you look at these, these are usually white. Um, here, let's just remove this. So you can see that this is a little bit lighter than the other three steps next to it. Uh, that is where jump will take you to. So with this structure, it's going to play A, A, B, B, C, C, and then D, D, if you think of these all as their own section. One, two, three, four. 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 So there's other ways that we could have made this exact same pattern, but I just find this kind of setup to be nice, especially for like a drum track. If you want, say, the kick or the snare to be slightly different for the first, you know, four and four passes in a row or whatever. There's a lot that you can do with that. So now I actually want to talk about creating full on verses using uh, these step components. What I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all the step components that are currently on the track. And I'm going to do that by holding down shift and holding down stop. I know that it was erasing the step components because it was green. If it was red, I would immediately have let go because that means it's going to erase all the steps like that. If it were white, I would have immediately let go, or actually it wouldn't have mattered because it would have just been parameter locks and I didn't have any. But my point is that step components are green and it shows you green dots when you're erasing them. I find that helpful. So what if I want to do AAAB, that type of verse? So I'll have it do these eight steps three times and then this just once. That's fairly easy to do actually. So I'm gonna hit shift and on step nine, I'm going to add a component spark with value three, three, Three. Then on, uh, then I'm going to add a jump one. So that says 
the first two, but not the third time, go back to the beginning. So it'll play it three times in a row, and then it'll play one, two, three, four, the B section. So kind of neat, and something that's pretty typical to use, pretty helpful when you're um, either entering in the chords from a song that you're covering or uh, composing your own song and you don't want to have to play around with where the steps go. The next one I want to show you is A-A-B-B, and that's a little bit more complicated, but not too much more complicated. Once again, I'll erase all the step components by holding down shift and stop. I'm going to add to both of these, I will add a component spark with the value of one, or you could have just pressed two another time. But the point is it'll repeat the first, but not the second time. These will have different spots that they jump to though. So here I'm gonna add a jump one, and here I'm going to add a jump three so that it, would go, so that it ends up going there. So now it'll play this first part one, twice. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and then it's gonna play this part twice. Okay, so I'm going to show you now a more complicated one, the ABAC pattern. And I'm going to do a couple things just so that way it's a little bit easier to, uh, to see. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this trigger completely. I'm going to change my step length to being 12 instead of 16. And then I'm going to start adding in my step components. Actually, let me hold down this and clear all the step components to begin with. So what I want it to do is first it's just going to play these two. So I'm going to put a jump one, because every time that B ends, it's going to want to go back to one. And then at the end of here, because once it gets here, it's also, actually I don't even need one, do I? Because it's just going to go back to one anyway because of our step count. So the only other one that I need is a way to get to C. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to add a step component here that will jump to three, which is where this kind of C section will start. Well, <laughs> section C will start. And uh, I'm going to make it only happen the second time that the sequencer comes to it, comes around it. Because that first time, I just want it to play through to B. But then the second time, I want it to go to C. So let's listen to it. One, two, three, four. 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 Now you could obviously do this by just adding in an A right here, but my point is that this actually has a lot more applications, and uh, as I'll try to demonstrate in the future, you could fit full chord progressions here, and so you could basically have many chord progressions on the track. And uh, it can get helpful to be able to give yourself an extra step count. That's more advanced later, but uh, long story short, I just like putting it to these 12 steps right here. Okay, so. I actually think that that might be everything I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully that made some sense. In the future, I'm going to be going over more of the jump values and some of the other, uh, and a bunch of the other step components. So hopefully this made sense and hopefully it was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching.